All right, so thank you all for uh, attending. Uh, so I'm uh, very excited. There's another talk about uh, Q. Um, so uh, with this, I'll uh, give it over to Eloi. And, uh, OK, so thank you. Uh, I'm Eloi. I am uh, a postdoc at uh, EMT Atlantic and my, uh, with my uh, advisor, Jack Noyer. And for a year now, we're looking a bit, uh, bit about uh, what we call program, programmable configuration languages. So, Jack, lo looking at, looking at uh, Q, we were intrigued uh, by this um, underlying uh, formalization of feature structures, which we, we, di we didn't know about. But, yeah, we, we didn't know about, but was, uh, as Marcel said, it, it's uh, uh, a formalism that uh, was used by uh, uh, computational linguistics since the, the, the 1980s. And Jacques remembered a language called uh, Life, which has uh, an interpreter called Wildlife, and uses these feature structures. Uh, and it is a, a general purpose programming languages, and it has these feature structures as, as fir first, class, first class. And in, uh, in Germany, it evolved in uh, all uh, the OS language, which does concurrent uh, constraint programming. So this is the plan of my talk. So I will spend a bit of time to uh, introduce the, the terminology of feature structures uh, by slightly growing in complexity. And the, the first part, mainly, I will show an uh, example of JSON and JSONnet. And Slightly, we'll, uh, I will show some example of Q and life and introduce the, the types and the sorts and what are type, side terms. And finally, we'll see what we can uh, learn from this and where we, where we go from here, from there. So in the beginning, we have uh, these JSON, so, right? Is, this is just um, simple JSON files, uh, which is actually uh, just a, a tree. We, we call this a feature tree. So the feature here is the label on the left of the column. So name first and last, these are our features. And the values on the right, there are values and there are only leaf, uh, leaf, leaf values. And there are simply types. We can have strings, integers, etc. but no types. This is just a static uh, JSON and we cannot do much about it. So. What can we do with uh, JSONnet, for example? Oh no, for, for uh, the first, uh, yeah, the first uh, thing I want to mention is the representation of this tree. We we have these two uh, kinds of representation where we label either the nodes or either the the edges of the of the tree. We call the first one that uh, we call them terms, and the second one we it's actually the the feature trees. What we are this is what we're, we're we'll talk about. So what we can do with these, uh, with these trees, in JSONnet we can merge them with the plus operator. And here we have two trees with uh, distinguished features. So when we, uh, when we merge them, it's simple. We just uh, unify, we just identify the roots, and we can add uh, new features like that. It gets more complicated is if we uh, have colliding features. Here name is a colliding with the name on the top. And we add a middle name to, to Jane. And a contact, the preferred contact here, is a, another value of, um, is another value one instead of zero. And what will happen here is that we kind of embed the, 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 two, the two graphs together. We match them by features. And the semantics here with JSONnet is simply to override the, the subtrees completely. So, Another thing we can do with JSONnet and we want to do with uh, our configurations is to have references within the, within the tree. So here what JSON, JSONnet does is that essentially it has the dollar sign that is the label of the root tree. And by projecting this, this, um, this root tree, uh, we obtain references, path references by projection. And the, the self keyword is for uh, local local roots, but it's you, you only reference uh, structure by by going to the to the root and going down with projection. Last thing with JSONnet is functions. So here we have a helper function get adder, which is uh, a call to a function, 
and the function is defined outside of our data representation. So we are moving from the data representation world to the functional world. I won't say too much about this now. And so the, the semantics of functions is reduction. So the, the call of the function gets redu re reduced to the, um, to the value. So what Q does different is that it have, uh, the features are scoped. So you can access uh, features which are neighbors or uh, parent features. And we, uh, we, s we also have the, the same pass, uh, the, the pass, pass references. And the semantics of these references are copy. The, we, we actually do a copy of the node that are below the feature that we are referencing. But this is not the only, only way in life. What we, what we, what we do is for, reference, for references, we have logic variables. So here I reference x in three places and they unify seamlessly. There is no copy, it's a unification process. And you see that the, um, the, the structure uh, of the program looks, looks the same, except that we have this at sign here at the top, which we'll see um, more about it, but this is what we call uh, a sort, and features are sorted. So let's look at, uh, so we, we know now that uh, Q has this uh, built-in type hierarchy, and si put it simply, uh, it is just symbols that are ordered, uh, that are, have a built-in order. And with this uh, type, type hierarchy of basic types, which what is good is that it, um, it extrapolates to order on structure. So we have this subsumption relation and all structures are ordered. What we can do with this, so just a small example to illustrate. Um, we have a schema patronym, so the, the dash is to, to close the, the, the structure, meaning that we cannot add new fields. So I have, I, have two, I have two schema definitions here, and I can kind of instantiate them by making a copy of, the, of it. Uh, here I have a, 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 a new object which has the feature Jane, and uh, the name is a copy of patronym, and we specialize it by adding a middle name. And here, contrary to, to JSON, we see that the, um, the feature just gets added because the, of the assumption relation, we, values are only refined. So it is a copy mechanism, and actually we need this copy mechanism to make multiple instances. Because if it was um, logic variables uh, and co-reference variables, we would change the, the schema by just instantiating one, one value. So this is not what we want. We want actual copy to make multiple instances of, uh, of a schema or a type. So going more into life and sorts. So what are sorts? These are, they are just the labels that are on the that are on the node and the user the programmer in life can declare any any symbol on to put on on the top of the on, of the node here so here i have the the sort jane and i have the the features um the feature attached to 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 the to the tree and the, the tree has a, a label called jane and the name has a label called patronym. But here, apart from the, the co-reference versus copy reference uh, mechanism with the variables, essentially it's the same as, as before, as in Q. But what we can do with sorts is that we can attach, actually declare a sort and attach, it, uh, attach to it a, a feature structure. Just making um, a real, some kind of real uh, uh, typing. So here we have the patronym with the colon colon sign. And with this definition, I can have this variable j, which has the sort j, which is just declare, uh, we don't need to declare it specifically, we just put it in the top of the, of the tree. 
and name and <coughs> Jane has a feature name, which is a patronym, and the patronym on the name of Jane will be constrained by the sort that is defined above with the actual uh, features first string and last string. And with this, this sort and distinguishing the, the declaration of sorts and the features that are attached by it, uh, we actually have, um, we, can, we can do general in induction, we have induction mechanism. So here's the simplest example with, uh, with list. And here, and with the declared sorts, we have uh, this operator to say that one sort is a subsort of another one. So it's uh, explicit sub subtyping, which is nominal. Uh, it, it is, yeah, explicit uh, subtyping. And with this uh, definition, we can, um, well, instantiate our list. And here, I have a list which is extensible, so I have a variable L, which I first attach it a consort with a head value, so this is the first value. And then later on in my program, I, will, I can specify the tail of the list by adding a new value. And here, I attach to the tail, fe to the tail feature the um, X variable. And variables are globally scoped, so I can further in my program refer to this variable and specialize it further. So if we try to do this in Q, well, Q, Q doesn't allow this structural cycle, which is uh, an option. And if we do it na naively, we don't uh, think too much, we can easily have uh, problems by doing induction. But this is, this is normal. And actually, there are many ways to, to do indu induction uh, with, uh, and recursion with, uh, with Q, but nothing general, nothing standard. But we can do it if, you, if, you, if, you, if we are willing to. So what is uh, actually life? So quoting from uh, the, a paper, life is a trinity, meaning it has this three dimensions of types, functions, and relations. So we saw that uh, users can define their types, but users can also define functions that works by pattern matching. And also we can define predicates that works like, um, uh, by, that works by unification. Because essentially, um, life is a subset of prologue where the terms are what I called psi terms, so uh, f uh, uh, feature trees with uh, labeled roots. And with this, um, oh, okay, this, this failed on the last compilation, but what, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely. It's uh, about the underscore, yeah, I changed the, the, the case and the underscore failed. But what, what, I, what I mean here is that a, a psi term, so everything is a psi term, is a, is a feature tree with a labeled root. And depending on the context uh, of, um, of the declaration above, uh, a, feature, uh, a, a psi term can be interpreted as a type, uh, this is the first example, as a function. Get, get other is just, get other is a sort, is just a, a label, and we attach it parameters and parameters are just a list of feature structures. So it is just one feature structure. And we can also have a predicate, is valid adder, uh, it, which has uh, another semantics, but it's all, 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 uh, all side terms. So a bit more about uh, describing features. So we talked about uh, inheritance and uh, structural and uh, sorry nominal uh, subtyping in, in in life so we have induction but since uh, life is a null programming language it would be terrible for for configuration for example it doesn't have um, the close me closeness mechanism and it's really a, a basic a, a very small language that is really expressive but you you really have to implement everything if, if you want to do a configuration language based on life. 
but it gives some insights. So since it is a, a subset of prologue, what we can do with this? Well, we have queries, unification, relations, predicates, etc. And moreover, we have these control flows. So for example, with these junctions and backtracking, and when I look at this, I think that this, in, with this junction in Prolog, you can enumerate the solutions one by one. And with backtracking, you can look where the value uh, was instantiated before, etc. So I'm thinking debugger. I don't know. <laughs> and it has uh, out, uh, read write functions for uh, outside world and modules and things like that. And we have also functions in, uh, in life, so we can define our own functions. And we have many uh, built-in functions to manipulate the, the, the psi term, to manipulate the data, to, the, the data, to look into it, and to, to make transformations to it. And it has this nice um, uh, mechanism of residuation that allow to, to call a function on a variable that is not yet instantiated and the function will be evaluated when the value gets fully instantiated. And this is powerful to, to, implement, to implement many, many things. So if we look back at Q and more, in a more general sense, uh, programming, uh, yeah, programmable configuration languages, we can try to identify what are the types, what are the sorts, uh, of our languages and what are the functions and what are the relations. So in our understanding, so in Q, the, we have these basic types which are ordered, so they are basic sorts. The struct, I believe also it's uh, some kind of sort. And we interrogate about uh, the annotations uh, that Q has to put on the, on the label of the, of the, of the features that allow some kind of uh, control on how the merging operation takes place. We, we, we can say that a uh, uh, structure is closed, or we can say that a field is uh, private or optional, etc. Are there sorts, are there types, are there kinds of sorts? This is not, not yet clear, we don't know. And what are the predicates of Q in our understanding uh, again? So the basic predicates and or and if. Q doesn't have the, the not operator, but maybe this, it doesn't need it. And um, so it has this great uh, addition that is uh, nearly impossible to implement in life without using functions, is this um, unary constraints and validators, which allow uh, the programmer to give one expression to a binary to a binary operator, just uh, making it a constraint, and when a value gets unified with the constraint, it triggers the validation of the of the constraint. And this is this is really great, and this is this is really great. And the the, vali the validators here, like max fields, is just the, the general mechanism to to call a, a, a constraints that are written outside of Q. And what uh, about field, cons field constraints? So here is the features. They have kind of their types. So Marcel talked about wildcard. These are predicates. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. But I'm not sure this is complex semantics, actually, for, for us, actually. And so what are the functions of Q? So I believe it's the E part, the execute part. So functions are everything that is outside of the, the Q language. So the, we have the, the standard library that we can call from Q, but we also have all the tooling with the CLI, the Q CLI, and we have all these different formats and transformations of our configuration. The FMT for formatting, evaluation, VET for uh, validation, trimming, all these are some stages of evaluations from the configuration that you've written and uh, an output that you, that you would like to, to have. And it has uh, the Go API. Okay, so this is our what we think of functions in, in Q. So looking back at these three words, um, I think life can can give us some 
some intuition about the interaction, interaction between the data and the computation. So how much we would like to embed, how much computation we would like to embed in our uh, data description language. Because here, for example, Q, um, so it mixes types and values, but it also adds some relations, some, some predicates with constraints, etc. And it also has some functions with uh, the outside world, with talking, the, uh, about, uh, yeah, talking with the outside world and making transformations, which are sometimes very useful for, for configuration. And it can give yeah, basis for, for specification and, and, and basic terminology. So what do we do uh, with this? So our work for now, we try to uh, implement uh, an executable semantics with the K frameworks that is uh, based on, so you, you write rewriting rules and uh, you have this uh, stack based um, state machine that you can program. So you can actually execute uh, your, um, your uh, rewriting rules. And so we, yeah, we, we started a, a, a really small uh, implementation of, of a kernel Q which can serve as an alternative implementation of the, of the, of the specification. And it is like life, but with, um, with copy most, mostly, yeah, which uh, life doesn't have embedded in the, in, the data, in the data description. So for now we have uh, the, yeah, we have type hierarchy, definition of structure, embedding, projections. And this is, doing this was already not, not really not easy and, and quite complex semantics to, to think about. And we're, yeah, we, we don't know exactly yet what, what is a value, what are the exact definitions of the evaluation stages, what is a, a def, what is a vet, we're, we're not completely sure about everything about this. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very, uh, very interesting. Um